Hello again everybody, it's me Chaz Larch here with another Fix It uh, video for you. I uh, hope you're all keeping well and keeping safe in these uncertain times. Uh, now um, I've got a little device here which I picked up uh, fairly recently uh, off of uh, eBay. Um, having seen one of these in another video um, um, that was uh, shown by um, Adamant IT, I, uh, Graham, um, and he showed getting one of these and replacing a, a charge socket um, and it looked like a really nice little unit and I saw this on eBay um, and I thought let's go and see if we can get that um, so uh, this is the device it's a JBL uh, Charge 2 and it's basically um, a um, pod speaker um, which operates on Bluetooth uh, but you've also got sockets on the back for USB um, micro USB and um, headphones etc um, I guess a line in probably I've never not actually looked in the manual for it yet uh, but I thought I'll get one of these because uh, I was quite interested um, to see um, the uh, the way that um, Graham took this apart and if I got one of these that was faulty uh, I'd try the same experience and it, it looks in pretty good condition it's got a couple of little dings um, in the metal work um, but I'm pretty sure that could be either pulled out or maybe uh, if the grill could be taken off we could push those out so um, you know the only other thing is that um, this end of the um, the, the, the two um, speakers uh, not speakers the, 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 the reflex speakers as they were uh, and this end uh, this one's slightly loose um, and I think probably this bit has been actually been pulled out by uh, the previous user as has the um, rubber band on the bottom so sort of leads you to think you know it's going to be quite faulty but I was quite surprised that I thought well let's just try it and see how it goes because I've, I've done this before I did the uh, um, before I did the video uh, I thought well I might as well try it out and see what uh, what it's like so I was quite surprised that uh, pressing the power button it switches on and it shows I've got three spots on there which is the um, the battery charge level uh, which is quite good and I thought oh, I bet it's, it's got a problem with charging so I plugged the charger in and it started flashing saying it was charging up so good so we've got charge socket I wonder if we can actually get any sound through it Bluetooth fairly simple um, uh, got my old phone here um, and so we'll switch that to uh, Bluetooth Let's just go settings, Bluetooth. All right, and we'll press the Bluetooth button. So, and that's flashing now to show that it's scanning. And look at that, it's been found on there. Let's connect to that. It's pairing. And it's connected. Beep. Well, I mean, for, for something that these are quite expensive to buy. Um, you know this is second hand is it going to be just all crappy sound or what let's go back to uh, find a file to play let's go for an audio file let's go over the horizon and it's playing back it's a Google Play music file so it shouldn't uh, have any problems with and it sounds really quite good now I don't know what the uh, the other symbols are but this is when I discovered that there is actually a fault with it let's turn it up that way and that's when you can hear this one this way works okay we're turning it up that way so that leads me to suspect there's something loose inside here. Let's just do that one more. Now I don't know whether these have got a. Uh, I don't know whether these have actually got a tilt control that, you know, if it falls over, it's supposed to turn itself off or what, and if that's normal operation. But that sounds very harsh. That that doesn't sound right giving it a shake you can't feel anything loose so I think we may have a problem so let's stop that music 
and let's see if we can get inside and have a little look. We'll turn it off for now. And off it goes. Now Graham when he was uh, showing his video on how to do this and I'll put a link in the uh, down below as they say, as everyone seems to say where are we down below there to Graham's video where he shows taking one of these apart and I'm going to attempt to see um, if I've got uh, you know the same skills that he has. Now I seem to remember his one was actually all cloth covered and there was a split down the middle where you could fold it out. This one looks slightly different so um, it may be that this has just got uh, a totally different way of coming apart. Um, just wondering if these ends screw off but they don't seem to. So let's try taking out these four screws. And that reveals the socket on there and not a lot else. So that's all wired through there. It doesn't seem to be any kind of split in here. So perhaps that's why this was taken out by the previous owner, possibly. A few little dings and nicks in there. But I've wanted a Bluetooth speaker for a long time. So this could be the answer. So I didn't just buy this to do it up and resell it. It's actually something I quite fancy having as a little Bluetooth speaker. So that is not coming out of there. So that seems to be just a little piece of circuit. I don't think there's any way that that's going to unscrew possibly. Right. But there is a split in here, either end you can just see, maybe not, but there is like a little split in there and there. So I think we need to possibly get the grill out. Let's see if we can get Mr. Spudger in there. I don't think that would come out from that side. I think it was going to come out at all. It would come out from there. At the risk of... That is really tightly in there. Hmm. There's no screws or anything to get out there. Ah, now this edge here So that's basically just pops in there and there are screws which you can just see in there which hold the ends on. So presumably we have to gently ease both speaker grills out. put too much pressure on it and twist it so let's just get Mr. Spudger in there and see if that will lever up from the inside. Ah, removable battery by the look of it. On the inside of that. far away from the bench. I'm leaning over, straining my back. Time for a quick slurp. <sighs> Anyone remember the old galloping gourmet uh, when he used to have stop his cooking? So time for a quick slurp. Graham Carr, Kerr, 
whatever it was. Now, can I see in there if that's? Yeah, it seems to be just held in place. That's why I'm pulling that slightly. Ah, there we go. Just gentle teasing these things out seems to be the way to go. But the beauty of it is, once we've got this out, we should be able to press those dents out. Now that presumably, ooh, big bit of goo. Is that a leaky battery? Ooh, I hope not. If it is, we could be in big trouble. This is a lithium polymer battery that's leaked. We could be in trouble. The old plastic. Oh glue or something, yeah, sticky glue down here. Has this been fixed by somebody else and glued back in place? Don't know, but uh, that's come off. So it looks like it should just be out there like little spaces to put things in to leave it out. I think that's just, that's not a leakage, I think that's just like a, a shock rubber, I'm not sure, I'll treat that with care, that's not really going to allow us any better entry, but we'll put that to one side, so I think what we're going to have to do is take both speaker grills off both sides, Again, I'm going to just tease it with a little watchmakers in that edge. Yeah, that's coming out. Just got that edge open. It pops in both sides, so we should be able to pull that back. Remember the JBL logo goes over the speakers. It sort of makes sense really, doesn't it? Let's leave that out a little bit more. Okay, so we've leaved it off enough so we should be able to now get the spudger in there. Take that off. Good. So, so far so good. They look quite nice little speakers, so we just have to be careful with those. So should now be able to take that one off which is good take that one off keep care oh that's got a screw on it so that's flat so i should be able to stand that up like that if need be let's take the other one off so that can come off there and i think we can probably at some stage stick that back in there because it just doesn't need I think that's just a, an end stand just to make it stand up right right they're a little bit grubby as well so we can probably give them a clean when we've taken them off taking that 
don't need these are not speakers these are reflex so they rely on the power of the air on the inside so we've got that one with that so we can now see inside the main circuit board can we see anything loose that's all held in there pretty firmly and yeah that does does look a wee bit suspicious whether that's the battery whether that should be like that or not ah and there I think is the cause of our problem look that big choke has come unsoldered let's just uh, focus the old camera You can see there that's come unsoldered. So it looks like to get this out of here, I've got to take it completely out that board because the other side's going to be not much better. That's been loose banging about. So Would it be, do you think, the best bet? Just Would it be the best bet, do you think? Uh, release the connections to this end and slide it out that end? I think that might be the best option. looks like that would now all that's not going to come out of there with the speakers in place so I think the next job is to take the speakers out are loose. Yep. Now just for safety's sake, I'm going to grab my pen, my marker, and as that's the top, so that's going to be the left. And that's going to be right. Just in case there's any peculiarities with the wiring on these speakers when we take this out. Uh, just very gingerly what I'll do is I'll hold on to the tab on the speaker press down on that little bit in the middle
catch. Just seems like a fairly basic spay connector. I don't want to go tugging it too hard because I don't want to rip the Speaker over there out the way. Yeah, it's not not a spring connector, it's just a little pip. Just a very tough pip. So same procedure again. Hold the edge connector. tough pair of speakers to remove so we've got those off they seem to be loose so they could come through so let's see if we can loosen the battery terminal with just easing it up yeah seems to be good good Bluetooth antenna remove that that presumably is the microphone there yeah so this bl this black stuff as you can this black gunk is not any leakage from the battery because there's some on the microphone as well there it's just uh, a gunk that's used to hold things in place so that's a that's a few so we could actually probably just put that battery cover back on and not worry about that because that battery seems to be in good condition so we'll do that in a minute but anyway let's get this uh, microphone connector off just gently ease that off Focus the camera again. Bring the camera down a little bit, why not? It's not easing out easily. As I said many times before, do not pull the wires because you're likely to pull the wires out of the socket if it's in there tough in which case so having got that out ah now the other thing is all the other wiring here that's on 
a loop. Well, I'll tell you what, save, make life a little bit easier. Let's unplug the speakers because we can take them out of the way. Like so. That gives us a little bit more freedom of movement. Ah, and we've also got a ribbon connector to that top there. See the ribbon connector? And there's a bit of flexibility on that, so whether there's enough flexibility in all of this. Now having got those wires out, I can see that, but can I get my soldering iron in there without having to take this out? Or can I? Yes, I think I can very very gingerly uh, no that's hitting the bloody microphone mm. one thing we don't want mm. don't want to go sit in that I think for safety's sake we'll take everything else out so we should be able to get into there and pull the two, these two wires on plugs and sockets and they're, they're for the underside connectors. In fact, there may be, yeah, there's a third one there as well. So let's see if we can pull those out. Pull the plug, not the wire. I can get my finger in there and ease one side out. see in there. Gently wiggling it backwards and forwards. That's one wire. So let's put that around there for now. Let's see if we can get this long spudger in there to ease the other plug out here. That's two out of the way. We've got one last one down there. may just be able to put the screwdriver in and seesaw it out Best angle I can get it at the minute.
smallest one being the hardest one of all. I think it's on the way. There it is. Phew. And now I've got all of those apart from the ribbon. If we push it through, now is that just sort of like wedged? Put some rubber in there. Yep. We've got any wedged rubber on the other end. It's folded around the circuit board. Just give it a little gentle push. Some gunk stuck to that choke by the look of it. It says it all wants to come that way, but not that way. Can't see anything through there that's actually going to stop it. There's another choke there. Oh, ah, maybe. Fiddle, 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 fiddle. See what's holding it back that's hitting these wires down here, isn't it? <sighs> Blue microphone. That microphone wasn't there. Okay. For whatever reason it's not coming down this way. So quick clerk. I think we're going to have to do a little bit of digging where this microphone is to very gently take this gunge off of there. You may find the microphone just is actually held in place by that and nothing else. It would certainly seem to be. Yep. Is that no, not sure? Ooh, don't like gunge. Sticky, sticky gunge. Yuckety yuck. But it certainly seems to be reusable. Spaghetti roll on it. <laughs> I what this is. Whatever it is, it's. Ah, I should probably also make an audio seal as well. Not just holding it in place, it's actually sealing against audio leakage so that the reflex speakers work. As long as we put it back we should be laughing. Now having got rid of most of that gunk, can we now push that board out? Can we do it? Yes we can. Sounds a bit like Bob Builder. Bob the Builder. Hmm. I want to get it so far so I can release that ribbon cable because the last thing I want to do is tear that ribbon cable. 
in there. Ideally, we want to take the whole board out. Something's still stopping it. Don't battery connector. squeeze pressure on the chassis that ain't coming out for whatever reason that's not coming out easy if it's this these rubber strips they put in there Infuriating. Do you think I've got it enough to be able to get in there and resolder that? I probably have, but it's just infuriating. I can't take the whole board out. Ah, it's easy. Right. So far, so goody. So now we can gently release this ribbon cable so let's get a little plastic this is a thingy and see if that will just flip it up without doing any damage to it let's clamp one over camp and then tweezers easily uh, ribbon cable out yippity doo dah that well that's well it's definitely come right off now So that need that would needed to come out. I think it's a, these little rubber strips down the side. It's really causing friction. So a little bit of wiggle, and there we are. So there's the whole shebang. Quite a nice bit of circuitry. Everything else looks to be in pretty good condition. So. Have a little look at this. choke it's a surface melt one so soldering iron on and we can definitely do this with just a soldering iron If we clean it, flux it, solder it, we'll be alright. Oh, it's a nice cup of tea, even though it's getting cold. No more a cup of cold tea.
balanced on the board there. Nice joint there. Good to me. There's another one under here. I'm just 
just wondering if it's worth playing that one a little bit better as well. What do you think? What have we got to lose? Save it coming off in the future, won't it? friends I think is fixed. Fingers crossed. Now the only problem is, with this, is that we're not going to be able to test it without putting it all way in there. So as I'm pretty certain that's fixed, that's what I'm going to do. Go for a reassembly. Just being careful as we put it under, I'll put it in rather. The ribbon cable comes through there, it could get caught on those capacitors if we weren't careful. So let's just be very gentle as we're pushing it down because it's stiff going back in again. But again, providing a little bit of squeezing on there to deform the plastic just makes that look a little bit easier. Right, I've got it into the so far so good position. Now we've got to get this ribbon cable back in. Maybe a little bit further. get the ruin cable back under that edge. Now would we have a special tool to do that? Well, I bet we would if we in a factory or something but I think what I'm going to just do is just apply a little gentle reverse twist to that and then hold it flat with my fingers
Excuse that break in transmission, folks. I had to uh, get real up close and use an alternative light source that I could see to get that ribbon cable in there. God, that was hard. That was hard. Hopefully, everything else will go back in a lot easier way. sure nothing's where it shouldn't be and power it on oh we've made the ribbon connector correct yes that's what I like to see phone So, that's good, we'll leave that there and we'll finish that off after we've reassembled it. So let's go into, uh, uh, put a few things back, let's turn it off first, and then we'll plug in the microphone. microphone back in, batteries connected, that's all there. We'll get our gunk and we'll plaster that microphone with that gunk that we took out. good and then we had a strip of that stuff that came out from down that edge see if we can push that back in Let's take the camera up a little bit push that back in there So it should stop that board rattling. That's a general idea of it. And so, let's screw these speakers back in. Okay. 
Right, having got so far reassembled, um, I think we can safely put this one back as well. So far, so good. scutcheon part that somebody's obviously pulled that out. Let's see if we can clean that up. So I'm going to need uh, something to uh, glue this back in and I thought well let's try uh, some craft PVA uh, multi-purpose glue. Um, we've got a lot of it here, my wife uses it for uh, crafting stuff. So uh, it dries colourless, so or opaque should we say. Should be enough in there to hold it in place. Just gently ease that into there. Make sure one notch went into the little recess. Move it round. Give it a press down. And wipe off any excess. Because I've wiped it round a bit hard, it's pushed it out. One thing I didn't check, didn't make a note of, was is there a difference between these ends should the speaker end be, or the, the stand end be one particular end or the other? I didn't check, so let's do that. Right, I've just looked back at the uh, first bit of the recording that I did and the stand bit was at this end. So presumably it's designed to stand out that way. Um, don't ask me why. So that means that this one uh, goes on to this end. Um, fairly clean, we'll leave that at that. Uh, there's a little notch top and bottom there. Does it locate with anything? Can't see anything it would. But yes, it seems to fit okay, so let's pop those screws back in. Put it back 
we go. That glue is still drying, but the thing is with that glue is it will very gently scrape off when it's dry. You probably won't even see it when it's there anyway. So hmm double sided tape I think. Can we just scrape that off? Bluetooth portable speaker model JBL Charge 2. Permanent, so that should stay permanent. Right. Let's let that sit back there on the solid bench and dry. Now have a little look. We've got a couple of little dents in that. I wonder if they can just roll it out. So we've got 
a cut out there obviously has to go around there so that's the top side so the top side fits into that slot Just push in also. get it aligned right, so it's there we are that's better relatively easy oh, nice satisfying speed to it. I like that. Not bad for uh, what I pay for it. Yeah, that's what I pay for it. 28 quid. A couple of hours of dismantling, resoldering. I'm well pleased with that. <laughs> 